All right, cool. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. Awesome. Well, my name is Brian, and I'm on the husbandry staff, and I help to take care of the penguins. Um, so I'm going to take you guys back. We'll show you some stuff that goes into taking care of the birds. We'll show you some other birds as well. And then if you have any questions, let me know. All right. So if you guys want to follow me, we'll go ahead and get started. Gather around here for just a second. Okay, all this stuff that we're looking at right here, all these big bins and pipes and things, this is how we make the water for our penguin exhibit. Our penguin exhibit is about 9,000 gallons of salt water, and we have to use all that salt water, or we have to make all that salt water ourselves. So, right over there, we've got our mixed tub. Uh, basically, we fill that with fresh water, and then we pour about 320 pounds of salt in there. We mix it up really well, and then we can take that water and transfer it into this tower. This tower holds about 1,400 gallons of salt water, and when we mix the salt and everything together, it in, ends up being about the same salinity as the ocean. So this is basically just seawater that we have in here. Then we can take this water and move it in and out of the exhibit as we need to. We do exchange about 1,000 gallons a week, um, so we will actually be doing that today. So we've got our big tower ready. Um, we're going to have to start making some more salt water pretty soon. Um, so this right here isn't really where we clean the water, this is just where we make the new water. As far as everything that we clean, that's all done behind these walls in our painting area, and we'll see that in a little bit. Did you guys have any questions at all? No? Alright, well, we're going to turn the corner here. I'm going to ask that everybody stay behind the yellow line, please. So over here we have some birds that are part of our outreach and education programs. So just file. I <laughs> <laughs> wasn't embarrassing at all. Uh, so these birds here we uh, take out the second and third grade classes along the Wasatch Front, teach kids about tropical rainforests and things. Uh, so these birds are back here because they're usually not here. Um, if we were to put them on display for everyone to see, you guys would be looking at empty cages most of the time. Um, so we keep them back here. Today is their day off, so everybody is here today. Um, so this right here is Tukey. Tukey is a black-necked aerothery. These birds are found in South America. And Tukey is about 12 years old. Um, right now Tukey is our only free-flighted bird. Um, so she mainly stays here at the aquarium. But we do have her fly between people and she's trained to fly to different locations throughout the aquarium as well. Um, so she's a really cool bird. So she's coming to say hi to you guys. <laughs> right over here we have Scarlet. She's a Scarlet Macaw. They're found in South America. And Scarlet's about 22 years old. Oh, behind the yellow line. Right over here we've got Mingo. Mingo's a blue and gold macaw. Um, they're also found in South America, and Mingo's about 12 years old. Hanging out over here is Dusty. Dusty's an African gray parrot. They're found in Africa. And um, they're doing lots of research right now with African gray parrots to figure out just how smart they are. They say they have the intelligence of about a five-year-old, and they're trying to figure out if when these birds mimic, if they can actually understand that and use it to communicate. So it's wow. really interesting stuff. Dusty is definitely smart. Um, he says a lot of things that almost make you think that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, and then he loves to mess with us, too. So <laughs> that can be kind of annoying sometimes. But he's very smart. And then over here we have uh, Mickey. Mickey's an eclectus parrot, and they're found near Australia, and Mickey's about 22 years old. Um, so these birds were actually given to us by people that had them as pets. A lot of times people will get these birds and think they're just great pets, but they don't really. Um, there's really high maintenance. Um, it's just like having a kid, and they can live up to, they can live to be about 80 years old. So just imagine taking care of basically a two-year-old for 80 years. Wow. It can be pretty tough. Um, they're, they're all really about, loud. yeah, they're very loud, they're very messy, and they're all about relationships. You have to spend time with them. Um, you can't just leave them in a cage and forget about them. Um, with these guys, we do spend lots of time with them. Um, for Scarlet down at the end, it took me about a year for me to be able to pick her up uh, before she liked me. So they're all about being able to trust people. Um, and if we go on vacation and come back, then they get a little angry with us. <laughs> so uh, I'm trying to work with Mickey right now because he's not a big fan of me because I haven't really been spending too much time with him. So. Um, a lot of people get these birds and just realize that it's too much work and they can't get, they can't do it. So that's how we ended up with all these guys here. That's sad, but good. But good, yeah. They, they ended up in a good place. Yeah, they ended up a good, in a good place here. We take them out to schools um, all the time, so they're constantly seeing new people. Um, we have people that work with them all the time. Um, we have enrichment programs where we always switch out toys and try to change their environment so it's not the same thing over and over again. Um, the colored cardboard, the little things with the pink coloring mm -hmm. down on it, what do they do with that? They'll just rip them up into shreds. So they'll hang on, we'll, we'll put them in there. Um, 
They'll hang on them and chew them up. It kind of just depends on the birds. Uh, Scarlet doesn't really mess with them too much, uh, but Dusty will just, they're gone. You put them in there five minutes later and shreds on the ground. So. Do you have any questions about the birds? No? All right, we'll show you one more thing before we head into the exhibit, and I'll head past you. And it's right around the corner over here. Right then. Okay, so this right here is our penguin monitoring area. Basically from here we can keep an eye on the penguins, see what's going on with everybody, um, and track behaviors. Right now we're seeing lots and lots of nesting behavior, lots of courtship, um, so we're hoping to get chicks this year, we don't really know. Um, but this is where we can track all that. We do also have a separate camera that's uh, so the live feed on our website. So if you guys go into our website, you can see what these guys are up to at any time. It's really cool to see. Um, so they're not up to too much. This is kind of their slow part of the day where they're mostly on the land. I'm swimming quite as much. Um, this right here is the temperature control. Now we do take temperature very seriously with the penguins. Uh, we have two air conditioning units that are pretty much working non-stop to uh, keep it nice and cool in there. Right now it's 41.7 degrees, which is the perfect temperature for them. We usually keep it between 38 and 45 degrees. Um, so this is a great temperature. Um, but we do monitor temperature several times throughout the day. We have an alarm that goes off if it gets too warm. We even have a refrigerated truck person we can call to if we need to. We can run the thing once to the back of the truck. And we've never had to do that, but we're prepared just to see. Um, and then this right here are the lights. Now, penguins are really sensitive to light. You can't just come in and flip the switch on and off when we get here. We actually have a sunrise and a sunset, and we have to lengthen and shorten the amount of daylight that they get throughout the year to create a season. So in the summer, they get about 19 hours of daylight at the maximum, and in the winter, it's about 6 at the maximum. What was uh, that noise we just heard? That noise was the electric eel. So we have a uh, probe set up in the electric eel, so anytime it produces electricity, it makes that noise. Serious? That's yeah. cool. So they're on the other side of the speakers over there. I've never noticed that. Sorry. No, you're good. All right. Well, do you have any questions about this at all? No? All right. Well, if you guys turn around, I'm going to head through you real quick. Um, we will head into our penguin area. Now we're going to walk up some stairs. So just walk through that. And we'll also be looking at, uh, um, we'll pass all the filtration on how we clean the water that's already on display. Um, do you have any questions about that filtration? Have fun, guys. I will see you guys when we're done. Ew, it's stinky. Can you smell it? We're going to have to fit everybody on the benches today. Get away. If you listen real close, the penguins are calling to us. Sit right in the corner. Yay. Okay, perfect. Um, so, before we bring the penguins in, just a few quick rules. Um, first off, where you're sitting, that's where I need you to stay. Please don't jump up or move around or anything like that. Penguins don't like lots of movement, so we're all that's keeping fine. still. Um, please do not touch the penguins. They do not like to be touched. I don't even touch them. But they will bite you. So please do not touch them. Um, and then cameras are fine. Flash is fine. Just please don't put it below your knees because then the penguins might try to go for it. Um, and I think those are the big rules. Do you have any questions about that? How much space is inside there? You know, as far as square footage, I don't know. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, but right now our space, um, it is... A little bit small, but we can actually build some holes. I think that's the 18. And there's 11. Okay, that's um, good. So yeah, and then in a few years, actually, probably next year, we'll be opening up our new facility and we'll have a much larger facility. Okay, um, so we'll be in here for about 20 minutes with the birds, and while we're in here, I'll be telling you stuff about them. And if you have any questions, let me know. Okay. Hi guys. All right, now with our penguin encounters, it's all up to the penguins. Um, we don't force them to come in here at all. So if they want to come in here, great. If not, that's kind of how it is. Um, so they'll be wandering all over the place doing whatever they want. Uh, so we do have 11 penguins here. We have five boys and six girls. Um, the way we tell the penguins apart is by looking at their flippers. Each of the penguins have bands on their flippers that have different colors on them. And those colors help us to tell them apart. Do those bands ever hurt their arms? No. 
Um, we put them on loose, uh, pretty loose, so it doesn't really hurt them. Um, they've had them pretty much their entire life. So. Which one's Gossamer? Gossamer is hanging out, out just outside the room. He very rarely comes in. He's pretty shy. So this behavior that they're doing right now is a courtship behavior. Aww. Um, so when, uh, when they like each other, they'll bow and make a hissing noise. And this is one of our newest pairs. They've actually only been a pair for a few days. Um, and it's kind of going to cause a little bit of penguin drama because this female is already part of a pair. Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> So they're not particular about staying with one the rest of their life? No. Um, they, they both tend to stay together. This is another one of our mated pairs. This is Bank and then Runner over there. Um, Bank and Runner have been together for about two years. Another, Coco and Gossamer, have been together for about six years, I believe. Um, and then, other than that, they, around and they go through penguin divorces. <laughs> This right here is Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is all blue on his band. And then he is courting one of the females that actually doesn't have a name. Um, we have two penguins that don't have names because we let people donate to the learning to be able to name the penguins. We have two girls that don't have names. Ghost Rider has recently just been looking for love everywhere. Um, he's been trying to bow at all the different pairs. He's been bowing at the squeegee, like the He's looking all over the place until so finally he found her. And, uh, but yeah, she's already part of a native pair. So, uh, that's okay. Those are actually just little fittings for water. So they like to play with those all the time, and we don't really uh, worry about it because even if they were to break it open, it would just spray water on them. But they're not very strong, but they're beat really good. Okay. But they, these guys will get into everything and play with everything, so you have to be careful. So this pink one right here is Stanston. Um, Stanston is two years old, so he's one of our youngest. We have three boys that are two, but Stanston's also our largest. He's a big boy. All right. Most of Stanston has like the longest tail. Yeah. Is that any addition of age or what? No. Um, <laughs> no, these boots are different, huh? Oh, that's my normal boots. Uh, I usually don't have this. Curious about them. Um, but their tails, um, all penguins have the long tails, are all gen two. They actually have the longest tail out of any penguin species. Uh, some of our penguins, though, have lost their tails. Ghost Rider, he does not have a tail because he annoys the other penguins, and when he annoys them, they fight, and they always fight over sticking out the furthest, which was his tail. <laughs> so he didn't have a tail last year, and then he molted and had a nice, beautiful tail, and then when they were Oh. <laughs> you can see this female right here. She doesn't really annoy the others too much. Her tail is looking pretty good. Uh, yeah, you lost it for quick. <laughs> right now, Ghost Rider is trying to mate. Uh, so you can see he's moving his feet back and forth and he'll bring in his flipper to the one side of the <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> Usually, when he does that, she runs. <laughs> <laughs> So we there's my three, three baby. Three boys, they're, they're two years old, they all have mates, but they don't know what they're doing. So whenever they show those behaviors, the females just bolt. Uh, <laughs> the other two males that are more experienced, we never see that with that. But it's just the three boys that basically, they start doing those behaviors, the females just bolt. How cold is the water? What's that? How cold is the water? The water is 43 degrees. So it's very cold. Um, it's perfect for them. They don't they don't care about it. Um, but we do have to dive in there once every other week. It's the worst. I hate it. It's so cold. And what are you diving in there to do? Um, mainly clean up, just because these guys are pretty all the time. We scrub everything that needs to clean up. And then we also do a safety check to check the rock work and make sure they're not ripping any holes in it. <laughs> um, so these penguins, um, they're the third largest species of penguins, and they're the only penguins that have that white stripe that go across their head. And these penguins are considered sub-Antarctic penguins, which means they don't live right in Antarctic and freezing cold temperatures, um, and they don't live right up in the equator in really warm temperatures. They're right in the middle. So we keep it 41, 42 degrees in here, and that's perfect for them.
So this is Ghost Rider. This is the female he's been courting, and then this is the female's other mate. So we'll uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> How funny. <laughs> we got a lesson in nature today. Do they know if if she ends up having an egg? If it ends, up, do they have any idea? Really? Who's it I is? don't think so. No. Um, and these guys uh, are just really great parents in general. They're, they've been known to raise other species of penguins in captivity. So I think really, if they just had an egg, they would go for it. In fact, there was a video I think frozen by an animal in class. There was I think there were emperor penguins there. One of the chicks got away from the mom. And all the other moms were fighting to see who could take care of that baby. So these guys don't really care. They just they see a baby they'll raise it. So yeah, so that is Coco. Uh, Coco's our oldest. She's about 12 years old, and her band fell off uh, not too long ago. Um, right now, we're not really worrying about putting the bands on because uh, we can tell her apart just by looking at her. She's looking too wide different than the other. Um, and when we put the bands on, it's kind of stressful for the penguins uh, because they don't like to be touched. So when we put the bands on, we basically have to just jump on them and hold them down. So uh -huh. we don't have to do it. We we won't. <laughs> what are you doing? The of course, Ghost Rider is a big troublemaker. He makes my job so much harder. He bites everyone all the time. He's always into everything. Anything new, he's the first one to explore and cause trouble. So. Gotta watch for him. Recently, he's been a lot nicer to the keepers because um, he's kind of in breeding mode. So once he's in breeding mode, we're actually able to touch him. Uh, he's the only one that we can do that with. There's Oh, there's your shoelaces. These guys are pretty curious. You know, penguins in general are very, are very curious animals, but they're also pretty terrified of everything because they are prey. Uh, so killer whales and leopard seals. So it's really weird because you guys are sitting down, they're totally cool with that, they'll come up and see you, but if you guys stood up, they would run away terrified. Uh, it's really weird because they're cool. so oh. curious, but they're also so scared of everything. So your fingers are... <laughs> your fingers are right there, honey. Oh. That If you take a look at Samson's flipper right here, you can see the left flipper. You notice he's kind of got it bent a little bit. The penguins actually have elbows, and they can bend their flippers if they need to. They usually don't, but they can actually bend them. Oh, wow. Uh, so he's kind of doing that right now. We did freak out one of the uh, aquarists that works here. She was helping us down the penguins one day. She was holding the flipper and it bent, and she thought she broke it, and she was no. freaking out. Oh no. Out. And we all just laughed at her. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know if it was that elbow. <laughs> so, is there a reason why some of the wings are different colors than others? Is that. So, that is a good question. Um, so, this right here is Meg. Um, if you look at Meg, her flippers are weird colors. Her, the feathers on her flippers are really tattered. She doesn't look that good. She um, says that she about me. hasn't molded. So once a year, the penguins will molt and lose their feathers and grow on new feathers. Sometimes there's some stragglers. Um, she, she's had those feathers for over two years now. So they're just really old and worn out. Uh, she does fine. She's doing fine. But, uh, Can you tell the males and the females apart just by anything particular? No. Um, in general, males are larger than females, but that's not always the case. Uh, so the only way to tell is that they're less penguins. Uh, so we've done that here, and we know that we have five boys in each school. When I stand up, they don't get scared when I stand up because I work with these guys almost every single day. They know me really well. When I first started working with them, though, they were really scared of me. So they wouldn't really eat from me or anything, so we had to kind of work as well. So now they're okay with me. When you get in the pool, do they all get out? And so we actually lock him in this room when we're in the I think I would do the best advantage. Yeah.
Um, and they, they get really terrified when they come in with all their big students here and stuff. Um, they run in this room voluntarily. We don't even have like, to get them in here. They just take one look at us and we walk out there and they all run in here. So we get them all whole fish. We don't give them any chunks of fish. Um, because if these guys eat in the wild, everything they eat is a whole fish. They don't take bites of their food, they swallow everything whole. So do they have like teeth? They don't have teeth, but inside of their beak, they have little bars that are like velcro, so it helps a slippery fish stick to them. And then they move their heads back and forth and then they can swallow the whole fish. So whenever they eat something, they eat it head first. Like they're in trouble. They eat it head first because fish have scales. And those scales are pointed towards the tail. If they were to eat a fish tail first, those scales could get caught in their throat and be like us getting a chip stuff in our throat and they're caught a little bit. We see that with them. If we accidentally give them the fish tail first, we'll kind of cough it up. So everything we give them, we give whole fish and head first. So which one allows you to test? Ghost Rider does every once in a while. It really depends. I've only really been able to touch them a few times without them biting. And you've other been here penguins all the time. will tolerate most, mostly the older penguins, um, like Gossamer. Um, there was one day where I had to take a good look at him. Um, looks like his fan was falling off. So I brought him in here. Um, I didn't want to grab him, so I just kind of put my hand on his chest and just kind of held him. And he yelled at me. He never bit me, but he just sat there and yelled at me the whole time. He moved his head back and forth and got all angry, but he didn't actually do anything about it. So some of the penguins are a little bit more like that. That's exciting to watch them come up out of the water. Here's the runner in May. So if you watch them, they might be a courtship behavior. This is Gossamer. So Gossamer very rarely comes in the room. He's also one of our largest The members. one with the yellow and orange? Mm -hmm. Yep. Gossamer also did not fall last year. Easily very never comes in the room. So if that one didn't hit back, is that just because she's not interested in the balls? The key hits and I don't think yeah, they don't always hit back. Sometimes they just don't hit back. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. And sometimes they will bow to others that aren't in their pair. It's oh. just they do it more often with their pair. How high can they hop? How high can they hop? Not very high when they're on land. In fact, every morning when we clean, we usually just leave this door open and they can go in and out as they want. And they always try to jump up on the benches and come up here. They never make it, but they, <laughs> they keep trying. Can the people see from out there with the door open? Um, they can see like this corner and that's about it. He's just hanging out. And we did try to get the penguins in. Um, we do lots of enrichment with the penguins, which is basically introducing toys and things to get them new things in their environment. Um, you guys want to come check it out? What do you guys want today? You can see they're a little bit nervous too when I move things around, so I have to be kind of careful. We'll grab them here today. We usually place them here. <laughs> you can see they're really curious, but they're also weary.
do you get the penguins? Where do you get them from? Uh, that's a good question. Um, these penguins are technically, they don't belong to us. Uh, they're on what's called the breeding line. Uh, so we got these penguins from Moody Garden Aquarium in Galveston, Texas. Um, and basically the breeding loan, uh, the contract lasts for 10 years, and we keep the penguins here and we encourage them to breed. Half the chicks that they have belong to us, the other half belongs to Moody Garden. At the end of the 10 years, they can either breed or take their penguins back, or they can just renew the contract and keep it going. Uh, most of the time they just renew it. Moody Garden says it is because they were under penguins, so they're not really looking to get these back right away. Uh, but it's a great way, you know, we can start our collection without having to take animals from the wild. And they're still building their collection without doing any of the work or doing everything quality. So. so it's like, if they take a toy and they bring it out there, do you have to, like, go dive in there and grab it? Yeah, sometimes they'll take, we don't, usually the only toys we put out there are when we put float so we can get them out. But uh, sometimes they'll take some of the TV toys from here and throw them out. Have they ever got to the mirror before? The no. This is Roto. This is another one of our two year old boys, and he's chasing his mate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> as far as staying warm, um, these guys do have a lot of adaptations. Their feathers are really cool. They actually interlock like a zipper um, to keep water out. Um, and then they can use that to trap air just like we do with the jacket. <laughs> They've got lots of fat too. <laughs> Um, but they also have a really high body temperature. Their body temperature is about 102 degrees. So it's pretty high. This one's interested in the people. So if you look in their mouth while they're biting it, you can kind of see those little Velcro like barbs that they've got. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we do get other toys out. Um, we don't do it a whole lot um, because these guys get scared of a lot of stuff and then they also get bored of things really quickly. <laughs> We don't do it quite as much as other animals, like the otters. We do enrichment three times a day at least, uh, since that's more. We always put stuff out there. So these guys uh, are kind of more into each other right now. Than yeah. Why do they bite the mirror? You know, I don't know. Um, that's just kind of one of the biggest ways they investigate things. They don't have hands like we do, so they have to bite everything. I think that's what they're doing. <laughs> Oh, so I'm like, yeah, I'm going to chase you. <laughs> <laughs> you got just a few minutes left. Oh, uh, there was a... <laughs> there was a... <laughs> I thought I wasn't going to have to clean in here. <laughs> <laughs> so are there certain things you can't clean this to clean make you sick? Um, not really. Um, mostly during the day, or every single day, we mainly just spray down water and scrub, and then once a week we use a special disinfectant that we can when we do the disinfectant, we keep it. Do you use other kinds of ingredients besides salt and water? Not really. No, we just um, basically just take a hose and use tap water. Um, and with the salt that we use is the same salt that you put on your food. So we use table salt. With our other animals, like our sharks, we have to have really special water with that. We have um, deionized water and then we add a special salt to it. Uh, penguins, though, because they're not really living in the water, they don't care what it is. If it's salt, it's, they're good. Uh, the only reason we do salt water is basically for their health. Um, they can be kept in fresh water. Lots of places do it. Uh, we do salt water uh, because the penguins have salt glands in their eyes, and so they actually drink the salt water and then they excrete the salt in their eyes. Um, if they're in fresh water, they have lots of problems with those glands, and then you have to give them salt and have it. Um, we decided just to keep things as natural as possible, so we uh, use salt water.
Yeah. Can you see the charts from like where we walk around? From the public side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's in our Ocean Explorer Gallery. You've got okay. it. Well, eight charts in there, and a sea turtle, and an eel, and a bunch of fish. What would we